is that this House do now adjourn. Mr George Galloway. Madam Deputy Speaker, I have an interest in Pakistan. I hold the highest civil award the country can bestow, the halal e qaidi azam given to me at the end of the 1980s for my work for the restoration of democracy in Pakistan at the end of a previous bout of military dictatorship supported at the time by the then British government. I also hold the second highest civil award in Pakistan, the halal e Pakistan, given to me for my work on behalf of the rights of the people of Kashmir. And I worked until the military overthrow of democracy in Pakistan closely with all the democratic parties in that country. It's worth establishing a timeline on this debate, Madam Deputy Speaker. General Musharraf, as we used to call him, when he seized power in a military coup in 1999, before we began to call him President Musharraf, an office to which he appointed himself, came to power having exiled and imprisoned, imprisoned and then exiled the democratic political leaders in the country. In 2002, he held a referendum which was an extraordinary one even by the standards of Eastern potentates, in which he won 97% of the vote in a referendum which was described by Transparency International as blatantly rigged, as were the accompanying parliamentary elections in 2002 described by all international and uninterested observers. He made a promise at that time that he would cease to be the chief of the army's general staff, a promise on which he has reneged. In September of 2006, Amnesty International issued a detailed report on human rights abuses in Pakistan and alleged, and I'm quoting, that the Musharraf government is responsible for violating a wide array of human rights. These include torture, unlawful detention, enforced disappearance, extrajudicial execution, the unlawful transfer of persons to the United States and other countries, and arbitrary arrests. That was in September 2006. That's an important date, because two months later, in November of 2006, that's just over six months ago, the British Prime Minister visited President Musharraf, and this is what he said. He paid tribute to General Musharraf, and I quote, for symbolizing the future for Muslim countries the world over. I'd like the House to just keep those words in its mind. He praised Musharraf, the military dictator of Pakistan, for, quote, symbolizing the future for Muslim countries the world over, unquote. So let's see what's happened in Pakistan since the Prime Minister uttered those words. The Chief Justice, Iftikhar Chaudhry, for insisting on hearing cases of missing persons and objecting to the privatization of a steel mill, a steel mill, Madam Deputy Speaker, I think we know who might have taken it over, perhaps New Labour's biggest donor, Mr. Mittal, who's given millions of pounds to the party opposite. The Chief Justice would have none of it and was told by President Musharraf that he must resign. He refused to resign. And on March 16th, just three months after Prime Minister Blair hailed Musharraf as symbolizing the future for Muslim countries, the Chief Justice was supported by demonstrations throughout the country, by lawyers, civil society groups, and opposition parties, which were savagely assailed by General Musharraf's armed forces. This included the first of many attacks on independent television stations. On April the 26th, 
The Chief Justice made a 26-hour long journey by car from Islamabad to Lahore and was welcomed by vast crowds along the way. On May the 12th, the government of Sindh, which is a coalition government of Musharraf's King's Party and the MQM, led from London by a British citizen, Altaf Hussein, to whom I shall return later, laid siege to the city. The main thoroughfares were blocked. Lawyers and their supporters were attacked outside the Karachi bar with batons, and the MQM militants fired bullets indiscriminately into the peaceful demonstrators. Eleven members of the Pakistan People's Party were killed. Ten members of the justice movement of Imran Khan, with whom I met today, and who is meeting the leader of the opposition tomorrow. I'm not sure if the minister will find time in his busy schedule to meet him, were wounded, as were scores of others. And last week, just seven months after the Prime Minister said that Musharraf symbolized the future for Muslim countries around the world, all independent television stations were closed down and a draconian ordinance on the press was introduced. Human Rights Watch, an organization oft quoted approvingly by Her Majesty's government, says this, As President Musharraf has arbitrarily amended the Pakistani constitution to strengthen the power of the presidency, marginalize elected representatives, formalize the role of the army and government, claimed military impunity for abuses, and these abuses have included extrajudicial killings, torture, and arbitrary arrests. That's Human Rights Watch. In The Guardian today, the story of how these independent television stations have been taken off the air and journalists fired upon, one TV station, Aj TV, was attacked for six hours in Karachi during the unrest accompanying the Chief Justice, the Chief Justice of Pakistan's visit to the city. A large demonstration was tear gassed, bullets were fired, batons used, rubber bullets used, television stations taken off the air and 52 bullets fired into the television studio of Aj TV. The US State Department, I quote it because the United States government often acts in synchronicity with our own, says that the MQM, which is the power in Karachi, and I quote, has been widely accused of human rights abuses since its foundation two decades ago. And goes on, in the mid-1990s, the MQM was heavily involved, not was alleged to be, was heavily involved in the widespread political violence that racked Pakistan's southern Sindh province. Three members of the Congress, led by Joseph Biden, another man close to New Labour, wrote the following letter, just a few days ago to Condoleezza Rice. Dear Secretary Rice, we are witnessing a spiral of civil unrest and harshly suppressed protest in Pakistan. We ask that you publicly demand an immediate end to the violence and urge the government of Pakistan to commit to holding free and fair elections by the year's end. Nothing less will be acceptable from the government minister this evening. Joe Biden and his fellow Senators say that President Musharraf's dismissal of the Chief Justice has sparked protests of tens of thousands, spearheaded by bar associations and supported by moderate political parties and civil society organizations. He says the violence in Karachi appears to show disturbing signs of collusion between the MQM and government forces, leading to the deaths and wounding of opposition party militants and other protesters. And they go on and they go on. They say in the final paragraph, the national interests of the United States and of Pakistan are both served by a speedy restoration of full democracy to Pakistan and by an end to state-sponsored intimidation, often violent, of Pakistani citizens protesting government actions in a legal and peaceful manner.